So as I get around the world, I'm always looking to know things about the app ecosystem. And dating is one that I can't personally participate in because I'm married to Mary. I'm hi, Mary. Um, but my friend Luke kept telling me about all, the, all the, of his experiences in, the, in running dating events and using dating apps. And I, I found I was learning a lot about uh, salesmanship and marketing and leadership and personal improvement. And uh, we'll get into that, but we'll certainly talk about the apps with Luke Kilpatrick right now. Who are you? Oh, uh, I'm Luke Kilpatrick. I've been trying the uh, dating apps and doing a lot of uh, adventures in dating over the last uh, about two and a half years. Uh, I became single rather suddenly and uh, had to do a lot of learning very quickly to figure out how do you date in the, I guess, well, the 2010s now. Yeah. And uh, it's been been very it's been a very interesting journey that uh, you've been actually a fairly good part of. Yeah. Well, I've been uh, watching you and um, you know go through this journey, but you became really expert on not just the apps but the data, dating ecosystem. I think you were in the, even in an advertisement for a dating company. I yeah. Think. Actually, uh, oddly enough, uh, uh, I went to one of the first uh, Match. dot com stir events with these. Uh, big, um, they have real life events, it's an online dating site, but they actually tried to simulate the old bar scene, but actually have everybody there be single with their own profiles. And I went to this event and it was cool. Uh, and they, oddly enough, had cameras everywhere and you had to sign this big release. But it uh, turns out about a year, almost a year later, I get a call and my boss says, hey, I saw you on TV. And I'm like, on TV? And well, sure enough, here I am saying, hi, I'm Luke, to uh, some girl on a, on a commercial for Match.com. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> it was wild. Um, so there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I've learned from you about how to improve your profile to make you more attractive to people, which actually also works in real life in other contexts. You know, how do you, uh, how do you sell? How do you talk people into doing things, right? Because that's really what dating is all about. It's, hey, it's about putting the most attractive face on you forward and attracting other people to you. And it applies in business, applies everywhere. There's all kinds of statistics in saying that people that are more attractive make more money, you do better things, people are in shape, make better, you know. There's really not a bad thing about becoming a more attractive person to both the opposite sex, but also just to, in general. Um, your sales go up, your, your interactions with other people. People are happy to talk to you if they're attracted to you in some way. And we should do a disclaimer, you're in the heterosexual dating scene. So yes. if you're looking for bisexual or, or other, you know, this is uh, strictly, homosexual. Strictly men and women, this is the... So we're not gonna talk about the Grindr app, for instance, which is... Well, uh, Grindr's got an interesting history. Grindr's actually the precursor to Tinder. So Grindr's the uh, gay version that started up with, uh, for that, of flipping back and forth people based on looks. Uh, and they made Tinder, which is, which is kind of the, uh, a heterosexual version of it. So let's talk about apps. What, what kind of apps are out there? And give me a, an overview of what's good about each app. Okay, um, so there's, there's a, I break them into a couple different classes uh, because there's different, they have different purposes and different ones work better for different people. Uh, the main ones that are, are really popular right now are mobile apps that are location-based. Tinder's probably the biggest and most unique one about it. And I actually like it the best and that's compared to like the the match dot match dot coms, you know, the e eHarmony. E those are the old school. Those are the not dinosaurs, but they're the they're the older, more established. They're sort of like uh, they're like the dice to the LinkedIn. Okay, so, uh, versus uh, versus the scale of of the timeline to you know compare it to uh, recruiting. Um, Tinder is really unique because Tinder gives you basically three or four pictures of the girl or guy. Um, their age, their name, and maybe 140 characters, and that's it. All you, and then maybe Facebook likes or people that you have in common, but that's it. And what's really neat about that is it goes almost back to the old, hey, I saw a pretty girl across the bar, and it, uh, you have to decide you know, whether she likes you or not. Nice thing about Tinder is it actually blocks that rejection. 
And this is what most online dating apps are. This is something I've actually, the hardest thing I've had to overcome with dating in general is people are really, really bad at getting rejected. Yeah. And almost all this online dating, all this stuff, speed dating, uh, matchmaking, everything, is people trying to buffer against rejection. And you know that's probably, um, as a guy, and because we're still out there being the aggressors or being the you know guys that need to push things forward, you know, very rarely do you ever get asked out by a girl, but you've got to ask for her phone number. It's you know, much as everybody would say, oh, it's equal like that, it's not quite. And uh, so getting really good at rejection, and what these apps act as is a buffer. So Tinder, what happens is you say yes or no on people, um, and then it. If you both match, you can then tap to each other. It's kind of hot or not with chat if, uh, back in yep. the old days. And what's, what's, what's nice about that is you know when you connect with someone on Twitter or uh, Tinder, they, you both know you're attracted to each other. So you've got that piece out of the way, which is really a really nice feature of it. Whereas OkCupid, Match.com, and a lot of these others, um, a lot of guys will send you know, four or 500 messages out to all kinds of women that you know, they just blanket the whole thing. Whereas if it's a guy at the bar going and talking to every single girl at the bar, he gets rejected, gets rejected. He's the creepy guy at the bar now. Whereas online, there's not that limitation. So oftentimes you'll have women that will, very attractive women on online dating, will have five or 600 messages to go through a week. And it's really hard to stand out. So you've got this deluge of data and you know just stuff coming at you all the time. And some of the stuff you know, I've seen both coming from girls and guys, it's horrible. Like there's just some really, really bad uh, game, I guess would be the uh, uh, stuff put down. But take me uh, through the rest of the apps. I mean, I, okay. I know uh, the guy who started Plenty of Fish and mm -hmm. Plenty of Fish, right? Yep, Plenty of Fish. Um, so Plenty of Fish is in the OkCupid okay um, Match.com, where you're essentially making a dating resume, and you know by making this dating resume, you're saying all the stuff about you, you're saying this is what you like, this is what you don't like, putting some pictures, and they're hoping people will, as they're going through the thousands of resumes, might wink at you or send a message. And then you respond back and forth and then try and set up a date to meet in real life. That's kind of the process of how those work. Um, and it can be effective, there's lots of people that have good relationships from that, but um, a lot of times, we, I think um, a lot of guys will just go purely on attraction and ignore everything else, which is okay. Um, a lot of girls will find one thing in each profile and they'll reject outright. And so one of the advices I give to uh, a lot of women is, especially when I'm doing a speed dating event, is look for one good thing in each male that you talk to. Look for, you know, if a guy's out digging a ditch, well, you know, he's all greasy, grimy, and dirty, but he's working really hard. That's a good thing. Finding one good thing about each person you do it, and it actually applies for marketing too. When you find one good thing about each person you interact with, you'll find that there's a lot more. We hire that way, right? Yeah. We ask you to uh, fill out a, a, to do a little questionnaire called Strengths Finder, mm -hmm. and we, we find your five strengths, and then we have something to talk about. And, and everybody on their backs of their uh, badges has their five strengths here, right? Nice. So we have something to talk about. Oh, you're a you're a wooer. Oh, <laughs> 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 or you're a you, you know, know a, strate a strategic thinker. Right? Exactly. Now exactly. we have something to talk about. Not not talk about your failings, but talk about your strengths. And right. everybody's more comfortable when they're talking about their strengths. Right. right? And so, um, so about a year ago, uh, for this, this, uh, I actually, you know, where I've had, the, I had to really figure out how to date again, and really had to go through a lot of change in myself. Lost a lot of weight. Uh, got stronger. Went on some adventures to Europe and Alaska and various other things and uh, becoming an interesting person to attract the quality of person you want to date. Just like if you're going for a job, you need to build the right skill sets and the right things that's going to attract you into the job and the salary you want. And so it, it's kind of worked together in that way. Um, so it's, uh, but the speed dating thing is kind of a weird thing I ended up with is... What's that? Oh, yeah. Um, the speed dating thing is, is interesting. I went to an event because I wanted to try it. Everybody's heard of it. And the host was miserable. Like he just did not do it well. He rang the bell in people's faces. It, it didn't happen well. Um, I called up and complained about it. And they're like, well, do you want the job? And so for the past year, I've worked for this company called Date Switch. Uh, they, they're one of the bigger speed dating companies in the Bay Area. And I've been hosting events in San Francisco and uh, San Jose. 
But what's been really interesting is because I've seen hundreds of five minute dates, you usually run 18 to 20 rounds a night and I do it about three or four times a month. Uh, you see the interactions of how people are uncomfortable with actually interacting with each other. And um, a lot of times what I do is I sit all the, the women in the speed dating all sit down and the guys move. But I pull all the guys in first and give a little quick pep talk. And you know, the most boring things, and this is something that when you're interacting or networking with people, what are the two most boring questions that everybody asks you right at the first thing? Uh, I don't know, do you like skiing or something? Like well, that would actually be better. But usually the two questions that get asked in any speed dating event, any date in general, is what do you do? Yeah. Where are you from? Yeah. And the hope is that there is something interesting enough in that to build out a bigger conversation. Sadly, once someone's, if you've done a networking event or done speed dating, but by the time you've met that third person and answered that question the third time, you're shutting down, you don't care, it's just, I don't want to talk to these people anymore. And so my advice that I always do, I bring all the guys in, and generally uh, in the interaction with this, is, uh, especially in dating, it's your fault. If it's generally the guy's fault if it goes badly, because the girl's going to blame you, because it's not her fault. It's, 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 so it's your, it's never the, it's girl's, never the fault. girl's fault, ever. <laughs> I've been married uh, 12 you, you, years. You, you, you know this, years. you know this. It, 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 and it's just, it doesn't, doesn't matter, yes and no. It's, it's going to be your fault. So take the ownership and own that it's going to be your fault. Take the leadership position and do it. And you're going to be a lot more confident, a lot more attractive to her. And so what I tell the guys to do is make her think of something positive. Make her, um, ask her, where was your last vacation? What did you do this week that made you happy? These types of questions, um, you know, going back to your, your five strengths, these types of questions actually set people to actually associate you with positive feelings. And so when you're doing any sort of sales interaction or anything like that, starting off with that little bit of small talk um, where you put people in a happy place, you know, what did you do the last weekend is going to be a much better, did you do anything, doing something fun last weekend? You know, these types of questions where you try and put someone in a positive frame of mind, they're going to associate that with you and you're going to be a lot better off. Yeah. Let's go back to the apps and okay. see, uh, let's see a little bit visually what, what uh, the different apps are. So, so what are we seeing here? So this is OkCupid. Okay. Um, so this is the one of the grand, they actually have a really great, it's an HTML5 app. Yep. And uh, so this is my profile on OkCupid. Um, you know, it's very, you know, I've got a couple little blurbs about me and what I'm looking for. And it's fairly straightforward. Uh, one of the big tips I always advise uh, girls and guys to do uh, when their profile's here is to try and eliminate the eyes. Um, always try and do the use. It, it, this yeah. is something that I've, I've put on, and this is actually something that's for public speaking. The less eyes you say, the, uh, the more use you say, uh, um, the better it, you people connect It's with. funny, I, I was in a journalism contest one time, and um, I think I got third place in this editorial review, and, and the judge said on the back, you would have won number one if you had gotten rid of the 43 eyes in your, yep. in your editorial yep. uh, and, opinion. Right? And so, Another thing um, that's also big, pictures. Pictures are the absolute key. Uh, I got very fortunate. This was actually a little hack I learned. There's a website out there called Model Mayhem, and it's all these photographers in the Bay Area and all over the place that want to build their portfolios. And a lot of them will do really amazing photos uh, for strictly just to trade for print, uh, or uh, trade for print or trade for CD. Yeah. And they'll do all these, you know, really nice, professional, good-looking photos for you. What I just noticed nothing. on yours is uh, you have yourself dressed in different contexts. You have the beefcake photo, right? <laughs> <laughs> and surfing, which shows a little bit of your adventure, yep. right? Yep. And then you a nightclub uh, attire, so I could see taking you to a nightclub, or mm -hmm. uh, a tux, so I could take you to a black tie dinner, right? Exactly. Uh, a lot of it, this is something I've Versatility. Learned. Versatility. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I've learned is actually for, for profiles, don't say, don't say that I'm a caring, awesome, funny guy. Tell stories about how you are. You know, um, you know, the last year I've traveled to Amsterdam, to Stockholm, to London, and I've, I spent a week in Hawaii, and these are just amazing things that I love to do, and I often go back there. It's much better saying that I love to travel, because yeah. everybody loves to travel, but tell... Tell stories, tell specific things, and this is going to be a much, you're a much more interesting person that way. And this is something I think a lot of people fail at. Yeah. Uh, now, it, does the profile differ between the different apps that you use? Um, 
you know, in the, so, particularly in the photos or anything? The photos, like that? the photos, you finally get a, a good <clears throat> set of photos that work well. Um, they vary a little bit. Um, OkCupid lets you do 10, Match, I think, lets you use 25. Um, usually, eight to 10 photos is about right that really show your personality and who you are. Yeah. But then you have other apps like Coffee Meets Bagel and Tinder, and this is Tinder here. Um, so Tinder's actually really neat. It's kind of that hot or not with the uh, chat icon. We have a, a very pretty girl here. Uh, and all we have on her for information is that she's 24. You know, she has a few shared interests with me. And uh, we've got a couple pictures of her doing various things. Looks like she likes food. You know, she sails. This is actually a pretty good profile. Uh, one thing I th see a lot of girls do that actually is really bad is that it's always a picture of them and I don't know which one she is because her friends all look the same. Yep. And so that's something that, uh, you know, have one or two pictures with your friends, but try and really make sure that it's very clear who you are in it. Um, but if you like her, which I think she's cute, then you just hit the plus and she's liked and that brings up the next person and that's it. And you just swipe to the left and, and back and forth until you basically you match. And when you match, you get an ability to chat with them. Got it. So it's, it's, it's a pretty slick thing. Uh, the profile on here for me is very similar to the other. It's just five photos yeah. and such. So Now, um, you see there's not a whole lot of information there to, to go on. There was, a, just in Wired Magazine, there was a guy who, who wrote a story about how he hacked, I think, OkCupid okay okay or yeah. something like that. What, tell me about that and tell me, does that work or, or does everybody need to figure out the keywords that people are going to be looking for you and stuff. Tell me about the story so, first so, of all. So the first thing, the, the, <coughs> there was a data, data scientist mathematician down in LA. Um, you know, from the pictures and everything, fairly geeky looking guy, you know. Um, and he, he, he basically went and, instead of going out and meeting people or going out and trying to get out of his cube a little bit, he went and built a whole big data algorithm to try and analyze all the things. Uh, the thing that he did do is he went and visited, he used this to go and visit hundreds and hundreds of profiles and OkCupid and Match.com both shows you when someone's visited. And when someone's visited, generally um, when you visited, someone will send a message if they're attracted to you. Um, and he went through a whole lot of that. He went on about 60 dates and he didn't find anybody he was looking for. Um, just because making that connection, if you haven't learned how to build attraction, you haven't learned hadn't been learned how to put out the best ver version of yourself. You know, you hear a lot, well, just be yourself. And a lot of times, if you are actually actively working to make yourself better, you um, will attract more of what you're looking for. Okay. Um, but we'll talk about the date in a minute. But yeah, he, 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 <laughs> but he went through this whole process of building fake process. profiles to learn how the system works and how it matches people right. together, right? Yeah, he, he built a lot of that and um, he crunched a lot of numbers and a lot of it. But he ended up, one girl out of the blue didn't, that was out of his pools actually messaged him and they've been dating for a year and they're doing it long distance. So even though he did all this work, uh, he actually found what he got by luck, which is how most people believe it should happen. Um, us being geeks, uh, we, we, we like relying on luck less and like actually believing that we can make things to change the world and have actually get what we want. Uh, I actually find, I think her name's uh, Amy Webb, is a lady in New York that wrote a book called uh, Data Love Story. Her process uh, of actually, she went out and made fake profiles that were very good and, and stuff, but what she did is she went out and looked at the type of women that got the most messages and the most information online for the type of man that she wanted. And she made a few different profiles and she found the profiles that actually got the type of guys that she wanted. And then she worked on herself to make her into make herself into that type of girl. So she actually did a lot of self improvement on her own to attract the type of guy that she actually wanted. And she ended up, you know, she had a qualification of up to 100. I think it was 1,500 points the guy had to get because she made a 72 item list of all the things that she would like in a guy. And then like what? Do um, you remember any of that? Had to be tall. Had to be over, you know, she was 5'7", so he had to be over 5'10". Um, she was Jewish, but not practicing, so she wanted a guy that was Jewish-ish. Um, various uh, different, uh, very, a lot of different qualifications. Um, and she did a lot to do it, and she ended up finding a guy that hit 1,500, and they're married, and it's actually a very good uh, 
It's a, it's a nice story, and I think her story is actually a lot better than, um, than the gentleman Wired's. Right. Is there, is there value in doing either of these kinds of There's, like approaches to building a, a bunch of profiles and figuring out what people are looking for, what they're hitting on, or what, you know? Um, I don't think so. Actually, building a bunch of fake profiles sounds like an expensive way and a very time-consuming way, and it's actually a buffer. Uh, it's something to prevent you. It's, it's still buffering you against rejection. And a lot of times, I, I've learned a lot more on actually going out on dates. I've probably gone on probably two or 300 dates in the last two and a half years. Uh, a lot of first dates, a few second dates, a few short-term relationships, but looking for someone that I really connect with. And uh, haven't found her yet, I have hope. But that, that has been a much more ex in learning experience for me actually finding out what I want. And every date's a data point in my mind of finding out what I want rather than um, building that, and it makes my profile better. After you go on a date, do you feed any of that data back into these apps to, to or is, is it over and, and on to the next? Um, it's usually over and on to the next. Um, it's generally, because most people don't know what they actually want, male or female. And, be, you know, and that's where one of the big things I think, if you're wanting to date, you have to have your goal in mind of what you want to date. Do you want a boyfriend or girlfriend? Do you want married? Do you want to have kids? Do you want someone that's just fun for a few weeks? Do you want someone that's fun for a night? You know, are you just horny and want to get laid? It's, it's, you have to have that goal and mindset. Yeah. And if you have that goal and mindset, you're going to have a much more success and you're going to be working towards that. If you're just out trying to get something, um, Tinder's really good for that if you've got, if you're good looking. If you don't have good high quality pictures, no one's going to do it. Women judge men online for looks way harsh, way more harshly than guys judge girls. Um, I've talked to a bunch of female friends and pulled up guys that I thought were practically male models. Not one of the girls rated any of the guys that I showed her above a seven. Interesting. It's really interesting. This is interesting because I, I, I figured this out early in my career of building a personal brand that if you hang out with professional photographers, they take great photos they of do. you. And those are great to put on your, your uh, you know, and, and now that I'm doing a lot of speaking, the first thing they ask is for a photo, right? Exactly. And they, they want good, good looking photos for their brochures mm -hmm. or their websites, right? And so having professional uh, photos taken of you really matters. What, what are some things that you noticed right away uh, about a good photo or a bad photo? So good photo versus bad photo, uh, girl, female photos should be in a soft light. They should be, you know, she should be either looking at the camera or just slightly off of it. Um, usually, uh, indoor photos t have actually done results better for, for women. Um, I usually like a mix of good professional photos and a few of those. I hate the shots of, oh, hey, there's Mount Kilimanjaro and there's an ant beside it. Those, those generally don't serve any purpose. Now, there's a nice close-up of you being in London or someplace or Vegas. Those are generally really good, but you with 500 of your girlfriends, you know, those don't work as well. But a good, high quality, professional photo, especially your first photo. In my opinion, there's nothing, there's no better photo for a girl to be wearing a sundress and bouncing through a field of wildflowers. Like that to me, just, you know, I see a girl like that, I'm gonna be happy to message her. And it's that type of thing that, uh, um, you know, a lot of this is stereotypes, but I believe um, a lot of this that I found in the dating, 80-20 rule applies through a lot of this, is uh, almost all the profiles are, but Male and female are about 80% the same. Yeah. Um, everybody hikes, everybody does this, everybody travels, everybody's that. And it's the ones that are the uniques, the ones that are interesting are the people that get the most messages. Yeah. If it's you know unique in the right way. Yeah. Uh, tell me, uh, um, back to the apps, mm -hmm. would you use all the apps if you're starting out or would you just pick one and try to, uh, and try to be good at that? Or, well, so you, or companies? The biggest, the biggest thing is, I think, if you're going to start out, if you're going to start dating or start doing this, make sure you know what you're looking for. You know, if you're looking for, um, you know, generally it, it never hurts to hit the gym. The more fit you are, the more interesting you are having a physical activity. That's, that's number one. First thing you got to do is really look at yourself. Am I worthy of the type of person I want to date? Or am I, you know, going back to the companies, do I have the skills and the knowledge to go work at this company? Am, am I going to be a good fit for somebody? Once you've got that and you're like, okay, yeah, I've got that. Then it's, you know, I highly recommend, um, I'd probably start off with OkCupid. 
because you can really get a lot of information off that because it's free. Plus, answering a lot of the questions on there actually makes you think about a lot of things that you want. Do you want kids or not? How would you parent the kids? You know, um, there's a lot of questions about sex. There's a lot of questions about your relationships with others. And having to go through OkCupid's okay questions actually is actually a pretty good exercise for introspection. Tinder is really good. Um, I highly recommend uh, Tinder and OkCupid okay are probably the two that I recommend the most. Um, Tinder is really good because, especially if you're traveling, um, I've met some really wonderful ladies around the world that we've just hooked up, uh, had coffee and drinks, and you know, not looking for a relationship because I'm leaving in another day or two. But I've been shown around the cities as a tour guide by having someone local that was pretty, and we we had, had a really good time. And you know, um, it's a really that's that's a really great way. Um, because it's location based and you know, it's, it's, it's hit or miss, but uh, you wind up that way. And uh, so those are the two ones if you're starting off. And the best thing about those, they're both free. Yeah. Now, you can go up to the next level, which is a different stuff, which is the more exclusive stuff. Um, if you've done the self-improvement, you've done the work on yourself to get to where you want to be, um, where you really believe that you are trying to attract that top 10% of people. Um, you know, if you think you're attractive, you've got all the, you've put all your ducks in a row. This is where the executives go, right? This is where the executives yeah. go. And this is, um, this There's, is actually where... I met a few at, at, at various conferences that do professional dating, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and this is actually the direction I'm actually heading in now. Um, I actually just signed up with one, um, Lynx Dating here in, uh, San Francisco. And it's a very different experience. Um, it's very, very personal. Um, the amount of homework that uh, this lady had me do, I've written essays about what I want, who I want, where I'm going, all this type of stuff. She wants your resume, she wants you know, a lot of very deep personal stuff. But one of the things I thought was really neat that she did is she wanted pictures of my exes as well as women that I'm attracted to that aren't celebrities. So that when she's actually matching, she actually kind of knows what you like. And that per level of personal service, it's 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 way more expensive than anything else. What, what should you expect to pay in this? It's in this really group? case by case. Yeah. Um, it's really kind of a, a case by case thing with that. Is it $5,000? Is it 20,000? Uh, it what? depends. So, you know, look at, looking at all the dates that I've had over the last few years and a lot of the bad ones, I've probably spent 10 to 15 grand on dates just going out. An average date's about $50 here in San Francisco and that's two drinks and a thing of fries. Like it really doesn't take a lot. Um, and being a guy, generally in most cases I pay. Um, usually if a girl's offering to split, she's usually trying to um, split. So it's, it's, if it's going well, generally you end up paying. Um, so it's, 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 it's really, it, it really depends on what level and what you're looking for. If, um, one of the things these matchmakers do is they do a lot of this date coaching here, how to better yourself. And that's a lot more expensive than you know, where if you've done the work yourself. Dress up, go get some nice clothes. You know. Uh, you make an impact with a tie on, man. <laughs> you know, uh, suiting up in the Bay Area is huge. I, um, and also, uh, I was in Vegas over the weekend, and I have a gray suit and was wearing a blue tie. And the way people approach you differently when you're wearing a suit, uh, we were at a show, I was at a show with a, with a lady, and um, we were sitting kind of in the back, but we just talked to the usher a little bit, and um, he's like, you know what? You guys are a good looking couple. Have a, uh, I'm gonna move you up to the front. And he moved us onto a $500 uh, couch in front and a show in Vegas rather than that. Um, I got upgraded to first class as well as I was wearing. And it's about being attractive I, and having that. I got a photo of Ronald Reagan by wearing a suit because yep. the uh, Secret Service let you right by, right? Because you look like you belong. Right? Exactly, and having that style is, is is important. One last question. What what advice would you have for entrepreneurs who are building dating sites? What what could the, what could the apps do to make a, a dating life better? Um, well, there's a lot of really, really, really bad dating advice out there. Most of these sites um, are they don't really give much advice on how to actually build a good profile or how to get good photos, um, how to do these types of things. Um, you know, going and setting up a quick profile on Model Mayhem and having professional photographers want to contact you for free is really a nice, you know, that's how I fell into getting the really good photos I have. Um, so they don't do enough with that. 
Um, yeah, you got to know Thomas Hawk or Trey Ratcliffe. Right? Right. If you're, if you're, if you're, not everybody. <laughs> or Scott is, Jarvie. Well. Scott Jarvie took a picture of my wife and I in two minutes. That just is. Fan- I have it on my wall. It's just my, a fantastic picture. Right? Oddly enough, all my a couple of the guys that took the photos for me are just students or just complete amateurs, but they they have the eye enough to to do it. And it's you know some are good, some are bad, but you know you can't pay the price. And um, the other thing with the the other thing with dating apps is. I find a lot of really bad advice is given cross-gender. Women telling men how to date them, which doesn't really, isn't generally good advice, and men telling women how to date them, and it's generally not bad advice. It's, uh, the analogy I give at uh, the dating events is, um, and this is why I generally don't give too much advice to women, mostly to guys, is that um, you know, asking for dating advice from a woman is like asking a trip for fishing tips. She's, she's, she knows how to get caught. She doesn't know how to. She knows how to get caught, but she doesn't know how to actually what lure to use, how to do that, all the all these different things. And I think the the same is in the reverse. So you know the way you want to do it is just like entrepreneurship is you want to go talk to the successful people that have done it in your industry and learn from them rather than some you know you, you don't get dating devi- it, getting dating advice from someone that's been divorced three times is a really bad idea versus getting dating advice from someone that, you know, as a guy or something has slept with hundreds of women. How did you get there? You know, the, if you want to find a guy that's in a relationship, in the relationship will. You know, if a guy got married, you know, when he was 35 for the first time to a lovely wife and they have a great relationship, that's the type of guy you should be picking their brain. All right. Where do I find you online? Uh, you find me a lot of places online. Uh, probably the fastest, easiest is uh, Twitter, at uh, Elkilpatrick. Um, and uh, or I'm on Facebook and everything else, and usually pretty open, but Twitter's probably the, the easiest way to get me. Well, cool. Thanks so much Thank for you. coming in and talking Thank about you. this whole world that I just have no clue it's, about, but it's always interesting to see where the investments are going in this world, you know, uh, how much money Tinder's raising, and there's clearly serious money in this business. There, so. There's very much money in this business because the one decision that you make that has the biggest impact on the, all the rest of your life, and you know this is a fact, is who you marry or who you spend time with. Um, who's gonna be the, you know, if there's all things, your collection of your five closest friends. If your number one closest friend is your partner and they are not right for you and you're not right for them, it's gonna have an impact on everything else. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.